Hey there, and welcome to this week's episode of Did Shakespeare. My name is Cassidy Cash. I am in the process of moving my office from the downstairs guest bedroom to the upstairs sort of bonus room that's in our house. It's a room that's up there that doesn't have a closet, so it can't be a bedroom. It's just kind of there, and it is going to become my office. Yay! I'm so excited. I have a, an actual recording studio set up there. Um, this one obviously is an actual one, but it's much smaller. So anyway, in the meantime, I've got this clock in my office that is ticking. I can't handle the ticking. I don't think you guys can, can hear that. If you're new to Did Shakespeare, each week we go exploring into early modern England, specifically into the life of William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare lived for 52 years on this earth from 1564 until 1616, and we focus on that time period very specifically. I don't claim to be an expert in all of the aspects of this time period. In fact, part of the fun of what we do here is to learn and discover things we don't know already. So we ask an interesting question about William Shakespeare, and then I share with you what I was able to find out to start an interesting conversation so that we all learn a little more than we knew before. So this week, the question that we're asking is, did Shakespeare wear shoes? First, this probably sounds like a silly question because of course they wore shoes, right? Well, the interesting thing is that the shoes of the 16th century were very different from today. And especially if you're trying to stage Shakespeare's plays or if you're putting together a story of Shakespeare's life and you wanna know what to put on your actor who is playing William Shakespeare, being historically accurate about exactly what kind of shoe they would have worn becomes an important question. And this can get tricky to implement. Um, as I learned at a recent production of Romeo and Juliet, they had both Romeo and Mercutio wearing these three musketeer, musketeer, tier, no, these three musketeer style boots that they had on these actors. And it, it kind of graded on me because they didn't wear those kinds of boots. Now, this is where history gets a little tricky because historically we measure things in centuries, right? We'll say, well, what did they do in the 16th century? And what did they do in the 17th century? And both Shakespeare and the Three Musketeers will date back to that overarching phrase of 16th to 17th centuries. Well, as you might know from how rapidly our own lives have changed in the last 10, 20, and 50 years, Shakespeare's life was no different. And measuring things by century can sometimes put you a little off as to what is actually historically accurate. And these musketeer boots are a great example of this because the fold over boots with that like flare cover up at the top and the high heel was actually something that didn't start becoming popular until the 1620s. 1620 is four years after William Shakespeare died and that's not a long period of time to separate someone from a particular style of boot, but having died four years earlier is concrete evidence that Shakespeare probably did not wear the Three Musketeer boots. And more importantly, his players on stage would not have had on this kind of boot. So to put Romeo and Mercutio in musketeer style boots is very historically inaccurate. In this time period, we have paintings of Sir Walter Riley that show him wearing sort of what you might consider regular shoes, those kind of tennis type shoes that it's cloth, leather, or velvet covering the foot and some kind of fastening device, either it's a slip-on where it's sewed together or later in the 16th century, they'd have had um, lace ties that held them on. And then there's a statue of Sir Walter Riley where he actually has on thigh high boots. The thing is they're not folded over in that bell style you'll see later on the Musketeers. They're pretty stuck to his legs. And so the shorts are really high and the boots come up to about midway up his thigh and they stick to the top of his thighs. They're very form fitting in this statue. And so that got me thinking, well, if Sir Walter Riley had different kinds of shoes that he wore at different kinds of times, then what kind of shoe did Shakespeare wear? What would be correct to put on him? And fashionable shoes for men and women were similar at this time period with a flat, 
one piece sole and then a rounded toe. There are some that had square toes, but it's just this regular sort of shoe. They could be fastened with ribbons or laces or even just sewn together and slipped on. And so just like today, they had different kinds of different styles and a lot of it depended on your preference and some of it depended on practicality. Boots, the thigh high ones were typically worn uh, to go riding specifically. There are some instances where the upper classes would wear the boot as a fashion statement, but for most people it was for riding and then the more regular foot covering that came up not much past the ankle was really the standard everyday shoe. Now, as you might imagine, during this time period, there were lots of different styles throughout Europe and not all of them were popular in England. One example of this is in Hamlet, he talks about a reference to a particular style of shoe, which was popular in Spain and Italy, but was actually largely scorned in England itself. And this is the Chopin. The Chopin had, was basically a platform shoe and its platform could be up to two feet high and the idea was it made women taller and more elegant and allowed them to show off their wealth by needing more fabric for their gowns. The English largely saw this kind of shoe as impractical. I mean, obviously you're walking around very easy to like break your neck in these shoes. So it's not, not a practical shoe at all. It's for standing there and looking pretty. And I actually wonder if it's not where the phrase putting someone up on a pedestal comes from, because if you're wearing this kind of shoe, you really are up on a pedestal. I don't know that that's just a random thought. Something fun that this teaches you about Shakespeare though, is that Shakespeare loved to put modern reality into his history plays. Now Hamlet is supposedly set in the 13th to 14th 15th century, somewhere around those 1400s, okay? Shakespeare lived in the 1500s and 1600s, the very first part of the 1600s. And the word Chopin doesn't seem to have existed in English until 1598 or 1611 in Shakespeare's lifetime. I don't think Shakespeare invented this word, but I do think using it was a modern thing. I don't think anyone in the 1400s Denmark would have used this particular word to describe this kind of shoe. And during the 1400s, the show Chopin was pretty specific to Italy and not Denmark. You can see in this portrait of Queen Elizabeth that even as a royal, she wore a rather plain shoe. It was designed to cover her foot, to protect her foot, and there are some embellishments you can see to make it look fashionable or of high value, but it's not elaborate in its design as a shoe. Among men's shoes, it was popular to slash the sides so that you could see the color of the stocking in between, and I wonder if this is basically a fashion precursor of the modern day ripped jeans you know, you go to the store and you can find jeans that have been pre-ripped for you. Um, it's kind of that same idea of slashing the side of the shoe to show what was underneath it was a fashion statement. Later, this particular style of men's shoe would be replaced with a kind of tie instead of having the slashing. And that switchover happened during Shakespeare's lifetime as well. In Hamlet, again, he speaks of the provincial roses in my raised shoes. The provincial roses refers to a fashion habit of wearing roses on the instep of your shoe. And they were generally made of lace and they could be decorated with thread or even jewels. Shoe buckles were popular, um, which explains why when you study American history and the history of the United States, the settlers that came over from England to the United States, known as pilgrims, in a lot of the celebrations in the United States, you'll see pilgrims painted with this classic buckle shoe. It's known as something unique to the pilgrims, but it was actually unique to the time period they were coming from in England. It was popular to have buckles on your shoe. Additionally, men did not typically dress themselves. They often had to have assistance to get into their clothes because the nature of their clothing was so complicated. And once they were dressed, they definitely wore that outfit all day. They were not keen on having to change clothes because it was really kind of an extreme and arduous task to do that. In 2009, the Museum of London did a display of a shoe that they actually found and they believe that the shoe was used in a play performed on the stage that Shakespeare was in. Now they don't know obviously that Shakespeare wore the shoe, but it was, you really can't get an artifact closer to William Shakespeare than this shoe. From their website, they say, the museum is putting a theatrical foot forward this week with a small case display of shoes worn by actors at the legendary Elizabethan playhouse, The Rose. The centerpiece of the show is a shoe recovered from the rose and 
the rose was on the bank side of the Thames in the late 1980s. That's when they discovered the shoe was the late 1980s, but they believe that it dates back to when Shakespeare's plays were being performed at the rose. They go on to say, it is believed to have been worn during actual performances of the 16th century theatrical stage. The remarkable find has enabled the Museum of London to piece together the hidden history of the playhouse. It goes on display at the same time as the definitive book on the theater, The Rose and the Globe, Playhouses of Shakespeare's Bankside, Southwark, is published. Now, I went looking for this particular book because obviously I was really intrigued at the idea that they found an artifact from this time period that was actually used on stage at the Rose it was fascinating. So I went looking for this book. Uh, according to Amazon, it is out of print. I did find a couple of library copies where you can actually get a hold of this book and read it. I wasn't able to find a place where you could purchase your own copy. If you know of where you can get your hands on a copy of this book, I would love a copy. And so if you know, please put that in the comments of where we can find that. Now here is a shoe picture of a man wearing those rounded toe shoes. And that's what was most common. The, the slashes to so show off the stockings were earlier in the century and then later that would be replaced with ties. The boots were mostly for riding even though there were a few upper class people that would wear it fashionably. So probably if you are putting, if you're trying to dress Shakespeare, the most likely shoe would be the one that you see on Sir Walter Riley, um, not the boots, but the other ones where he, the picture of him and his son, the, just the regular rounded toe shoe tied either with laces or just sewn up like a slip-on would be the most likely shoe that William Shakespeare would have worn on a daily basis. That's it for this week here at Did Shakespeare. I am Cassidy Cash and I hope you learned something new about the Bard. <laughs> If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. As Shakespeareans, we love our friends and we love having more people to discuss our history with. Shakespeare is a lot of fun and the history of William Shakespeare is a lot of fun and it's always greater when you have someone to share it with. So if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next week. Don't forget, two weeks from today is the launch of That Shakespeare Life podcast where I will be interviewing people on topics just like this one. In the works, we have have an interview in production as we speak with a historical costumer who we interview about topics just like this, the kind of shoes that Shakespeare would have worn or the ones that would have been used on stage. We are going inside the real life of William Shakespeare by interviewing the experts that know him best. So please stay tuned for that. And don't forget to jump over to iTunes and leave us a review on our very first episode, April 23rd, 2018. It's the official launch of That Shakespeare Life. We will have a big countdown over on Facebook and Twitter where I'll be giving away lots of stuff so be sure to join us over there. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.